Kuwait, located on the northeastern edge of the Arabian Peninsula, is a constitutional monarchy with a unique and intriguing political system. While many neighboring nations are ruled by monarchies with varying degrees of power, Kuwait stands out for its blend of monarchical and democratic principles. Let's dive deep into the dynamics of Kuwait's parliamentary system. Historically, Kuwait was known for its vibrant merchant community. These merchants played a pivotal role in pushing for political reforms. In 1962, the country adopted its constitution, which outlined the establishment of a national assembly, thereby setting the stage for its distinct political structure. The National Assembly, also known as the Majlis al Uma, is the chief legislative body in Kuwait. It consists of 50 elected members who represent the five electoral districts of the country. These members serve a four-year term. But what's unique about this system is that, unlike many parliaments worldwide, members of the Kuwaiti government, including ministers, also have seats in the assembly and can participate in discussions, though they can't vote on legislation. One of the primary responsibilities of the National Assembly is to draft and approve laws. However, the Emir, the head of state, has the authority to veto any legislation. In instances of a veto, the National Assembly can still override the decision with a two-thirds majority. The relationship between the ruling monarchy and the National Assembly has seen its share of tensions. Over the years, there have been instances where the Emir has dissolved the National Assembly due to conflicts, only for it to be re-elected later. This dynamic underscores the checks and balances in place within Kuwait's political system. The Emir can dissolve the National Assembly, but he cannot interfere in the election process. Similarly, the National Assembly has the power to question ministers and even pass a vote of no confidence against them. Kuwait's political landscape is further complicated by the fact that political parties are not officially recognized. Instead, members of the National Assembly often form temporary blocs based on ideologies or shared interests. This means the political landscape can be fluid, with members shifting alliances based on the issue at hand. Women in Kuwait achieved the right to vote and stand for election in 2005. This was a significant milestone and marked a shift towards greater inclusivity in the political sphere. Since then, several women have been elected to the National Assembly, reflecting changing societal norms and progress in gender equality. In addition to the National Assembly, Kuwait's legal and political framework is shaped by its judiciary system. Independent from both the legislative and executive branches, the judiciary ensures that the rule of law is maintained and provides a platform for grievances to be addressed. Another defining feature of Kuwait's parliamentary system is its open diwans. These are informal gatherings, rooted in Bedouin traditions, where citizens meet to discuss societal and political issues. These diwans play a crucial role in fostering dialogue and ensuring that the voices of ordinary citizens are heard. While the National Assembly holds significant powers in terms of legislation and oversight, the Emir's role remains central to Kuwait's governance. The Emir is responsible for setting the country's broader policy direction and has the final say on most matters of state. Kuwait's journey in establishing its unique political system has not been without challenges. The nation has witnessed periods of political instability, often due to tensions between the monarchy and the parliament. Yet, these challenges have also been instrumental in refining and strengthening the democratic structures in place. Reforms have been a constant theme in the evolving relationship between the National Assembly and the monarchy. Both entities have shown a willingness to adapt and change, reflecting the nation's aspirations and its desire to achieve a harmonious balance between traditional governance and modern democratic values. In conclusion, Kuwait's parliamentary system, with its intricate balance between monarchical and democratic principles, serves as a compelling study in governance. Its commitment to checks and balances, along with its willingness to adapt and reform, makes it a standout example in the region. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of Kuwait's political landscape. If you found this informative, please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Middle East Info for more insightful content.